Hello everybody, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to another video. This time I'm back with the first video of my new playthrough series where I'm playing through the Fallout 2D20 tabletop RPG. I asked you all what I should play next for my new playthrough series and you all voted an RPG. I asked what RPG and you all voted Fallout, so here we are. I'm going to jump into the tools and sources I'll be using for this playthrough here in a second, but as you can see here, I am going to be using Foundry Virtual Tabletop for this series. Um, I was playing in my last stream with, you know, in pen and paper and using real dice, and while that's all fine and good, I think it will be easier and more easy to see using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So I'm tentatively planning to stick with this, but y'all let me know if you just hate Foundry playing this way and I can you know maybe think about switching back to just how I did it before with the overhead cam but I think this will be easier to see and play hopefully but we'll see. I should mention real quick for the length of these videos I'm not for sure how long they're gonna be I'm gonna try to have them at least be over a half hour probably under an hour so maybe in the range of like about 45 minutes this first one might be a bit shorter just because I don't have as much time to record today but um, hopefully going forward in the future, they'll be a bit longer. Like I said, maybe around 45 minutes or so, but let me know if you want them, you know, longer or shorter. And I should also quickly note, I don't know how long I'm going to do this series for. Um, tentatively, I'm thinking about two months, so about eight episodes or so, but um, I'm not 100%. We'll just kind of play it by ear and see uh, how things are going a little bit down the line. So to quickly go over the sources and tools I'll be using um, to start out, I am playing the Fallout 2D20 Tabletop RPG, and I will be using Mythic Game Master Emulator 2nd Edition for the main Game Master emulation. Um, as far as other tools, I do have a Weather Oracle here from the game Iron Valley that I'll be using just to, um, every new day, just generate some weather to see what's going on. Um, I am. As I kind of mentioned earlier, I will be using Foundry Virtual Tabletop as the playboard and kind of virtual tabletop that I'll be using. Um, Foundry does a different game system, so there's a specific game system for the Fallout 2D20 game. And as you can see in the bottom left hand corner here, there is a plugin for Mythic, so I will also be using that. Um, I also want to link the site gamemaps.com. As you can see in the background, I've been using these really nice region maps that I got from Game Maps. There is also a site that I'll link in the description. I don't think I'll be using it today, but I might use it at some point for scavenging rules. Um, when you like visit a location or you know you're looking inside like a locked safe or something, there are certain rules for scavenging, and someone made a website to just simply plug in the things and have it do it. For you so it's pretty nice and whenever i do scavenging i will be using that site so i'm gonna real quick do an overview of foundry and kind of how i have everything set up here so to start out um i have a bunch of different maps for the different regions i have this main region overview and then each of the individual regions um which we're in concord right now so that's what i have pulled up i have my character created here which Marvash, who I will be continuing the adventures of. And you can see it's got a pretty cool looking uh, character sheets. So I got my survivor background here, XP, level, luck points, got all of the uh, hit locations, um, my health, radiation, drive stats, um, favorite weapons. Right now I'm carrying my baseball bat, got my abilities over here. So all my skills um, are all my special perks uh, or abilities, and then all my skills there. Got my perks over here for my piercing strike and faster healing. Got my weapons and ammo here, apparel, got my drifter outfit on, um, my gear. So I really like how this looks and it's pretty well set up and organized, I think, for um, how everything runs. I will also have, I have an extra journal here. There's a journals tab where you can just track kind of notes and stuff. So I have one main journal that I'll be tracking all the scenes, which I'll do a quick recap here in a minute. And I also have another journal for different factions and groups encountered. Uh, besides that, that's pretty much it. As I kind of noted down here, I'm using the Mythic kind of plugin for Foundry, which is super nice. It allows you to have your character list, which we have here kind of filled out, and then thread list, which I have here. I guess I need to kind of edit that, but um, then it has your chaos factor, which is pretty nice. And then it has all the buttons for, you know, fake question, scene altered, random event, event focus. Scroll down, you got all the action descriptions. You just click it, roll some dice, pops up over here, 
drop, and then it rolls the second one. Drop enemy. That's that's an action. Um, it's got all the different element meetings, characters, locations, all the good mythic tables just right there. And just add a click of a button, it'll make things super easy. If I want to ask a fake question, it automatically takes in the chaos ranking. So I'm just like, okay, I want to be very certain. Is the answer yes? And it's no, even though it was nearly certain it was no. So it's pretty cool. There's no like looking at charts. It just kind of auto does it. So I think, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how Foundry works for this. Like I said, I think it should make things easy for you to see and easier for me to run with a lot of this being taken care of um, during combat. You know, I can have everybody with this little combat encounter to track initiatives and health. It should just be a lot more straightforward. So I'm going to do a quick overview. If you didn't watch the previous playthrough live stream I did of the character Marbash is who I will be continuing with for this playthrough series. So Marbash is the background of a survivor, um, only level one. Um, their main skill is intellect. They have really high intellect, a pretty high strength and endurance, and then everything else is kind of just a dump stat. Um, the main skills are medicine, melee weapons, and science. Uh, so I got my perks over here. Uh, I got faster healing, so whenever I make a, an endurance plus survival test to heal my own injuries, I get a first d20 for free. And then I have my piercing strike perk, which my attacks using unarmed or bladed melee weapons gain the piercing plus one damage effect, or I add plus one to any piercing ranking that's already there. As far as my weapons, I have a pipe gun and a baseball bat, but I've mainly just been using the baseball bat because melee weapons is kind of one of my uh, expertise as Marbash. Um, just have a drifter's outfit on, kind of one of my starting items. I don't have too much as far as actual equipment goes. I have a Rataway and a stim pack, and I also am carrying a first aid kit. The first aid kit's pretty handy. It just, whenever I do the first aid action, I can heal an extra two HP, um, I also have 57 caps, that's where that's tracked. And that's a little bit about Marbash, I'll quickly go over the story so far. So a recap of last session was Marbash started over here at the Drumlin Diner, where he was doing some trading and talking to Trudy, who is who works there. And um, while doing some trading and talking, Trudy, um, who's probably a somewhat acquaintance with Marbash, they at least know each other, and Trudy probably knows that Marbash has some medical skills. Um, the they two are talking and Trudy get brought up the Abernathy family, which Marbash knows of, has met Blake and Connie maybe once and just had brief interactions with them, um, but doesn't know him like super well. And Trudy talks about how Lucy, the one of the daughters of the Abernathy family, recently got injured and the, the Abernathy are looking for someone to help Lucy out and treat her injuries. So uh, Trudy kind of proposes this quest to Marbash, which he gladly accepts. Does a little bit of trading with Trudy because she is, she's a trader, so she's got stuff. And um, after that, headed off to Abernathy Farm, which is scene two. Um, on the way there, though, there was a bit of a, a bit of an issue, and that he was. Basically, I imagined I was trying to take a direct route from like here to here and maybe um, somewhere like along this road, like down in this area, I ran upon a roadblock where there was a group of ghouls that called themselves the Unusually Beautifuls and they wouldn't let me pass. They weren't super threatening. Um, they were just kind of straightforward. They didn't ask for money or anything to pass. They're just like, this area is ours this road is blocked off, you cannot enter. And um, Marbash not being the most persuasive character, just decided to say, okay, you know, I'll be on my way. And he was, he kind of just took a bit of a detour, took a bit longer to get to Abernathy Farm. But after a short little bit, um, got there. And so with scene three, we arrived at the farm. I should mention um, the weather was storming this whole time, so it was a bit harder to, to figure out where we were going. And when we pulled up, you know, we we're probably just kind of soaked um, from the walkover. But uh, we get to Abernathy's farm. At this point, you know, I'm walking up with my little first aid bag. Um, definitely not wielding the baseball bat. Just want to look non-hostile, because even though um, 
I kind of know these people. They also don't really know I'm coming by and who knows. So I approach the door, knock on it, and someone comes to the door. I think it was Connie, the, uh, the wife, comes to the door, answers it. She's pretty cautious, but then once I explain the situation, who I am, she kind of recognizes me and lets me in. And so I get talking with Connie as the wife and Blake is the husband. I uh, get talking with them. They bring me where Lucy is and I start trying to treat her injuries. Um, I try to motivate her with a pep talk, which doesn't really do much. So then I just kind of get to work with, uh, I give her a stim pack and then just did a some healing and first aid on her to treat her head injury. Um, afterwards, I kind of go in the kitchen. I'm just like enjoying like a, a Nuka Cola or something as I'm chatting with the parents as Lucy's resting in the other room. And I ask them kind of what happened, and they mentioned that a raider group attacked. A raider group by the name of the, what I call them, the Rotten Raiders, uh, were the ones that attacked Abernathy Farm. And apparently, during the ruckus, um, Lucy got injured, got some head injury. And what's interesting, what I found out was that um, the Rotten Raiders had apparently been to Abernathy Farm in the past. This wasn't the first time they'd visited this farm. And apparently, at some point in the past, they actually killed one of the Abernathy's, um, like Blake and Connie's daughter. I think her name is Mary, um, was killed by the same raiders at some point in the past. So this isn't the first time they've dealt with these raiders. But when I asked them, you know, is there any way I can help? Do you want me to do anything? They said no. I mean, I'm not the most um, well-trained person. You know, I'm not the. I don't have like tons of guns or anything. I'm more of a medic. So like. I don't blame him for not wanting my help, but at the same time, I'm like, man, I hope... I'm definitely going to come back at some point to check to see what's going on with that situation, if they need more help, stuff like that. But at the time, they're like, no, we seem like we can deal with it, or maybe they don't want to provoke it and make it worse. I don't know. So, whatever. Um, then the next scene was, well, after the Abernathy farm, I got they gave me a bit of caps, and then I was on my way to the Museum of Freedom because uh, while traveling around the area, I had heard word that there was a group of Minutemen trapped at the Museum of Freedom. So I wanted to go start, kind of see what their deal is. Um, I've never really interacted with the Minutemen, but from what I've heard, uh, and Marbash is kind of behind their cause, so you would want to go help where he can, and being a wanderer, you know, he doesn't have much to do, so you just can go wander. Um, and so from Abernathy Farms, started heading to the Museum of Freedom, um, as you can see here, I'm just using this little pit boy uh, token for my character. And we'll say maybe like, you know, over halfway, three fourths of the way there, um, Marbash runs into a bit of a kerfuffle because there are some raiders that seem to be attacking some settlers. I think I, I determined that they were like, maybe one was a trader, like a caravan person. The other one was just like a normal settler commoner type thing. Um, so there was two raiders attacking two kind of commoners uh, wastelander type people and so they hadn't seen me yet the raiders hadn't seen me so kind of taking a moment to think about what i should do i slowly walk up with my baseball baseball bat and start fighting the raiders and all goes fairly well raiders are taken out caravan people were saved and that was pretty much the recap of the live stream of what has happened uh so far Okay, so that's kind of the story so far. So before we start hopping into new stuff, I kind of want to take a moment to go back in time. And because I never really established too much of a backstory of who Marbash is, where they came from, how old they are, stuff like that. I kind of hinted at it, but never really established anything. So let's go ahead and take a moment to figure out who he is and kind of where he came from. Um, so how old he is, he's 38 years old. Um, bit of an older guy, been around a while, so he's picked up some medical skills. And for his backstory, the thing I kind of came up with, I'm not going to just be too specific or too detailed here, just because like I didn't want to come up with too many details, because it's not super important. But in general, uh, Marbash grew up in some settlement village, uh, not super close by to Boston, you know, pretty outskirts, not close by at all, I would say. Um, and he lived in this uh, settlement area that was more or less self-sustaining. Um, There's maybe some other local settlements that they traded with, but for the most part, they were able to get by without having to do too much trading, I guess. 
And so he lived there, grew up there, and kind of worked there. Um, probably was trained um, in defending the place, so that's why he's good with melee weapons. And maybe he had a had a good um, he had a knack for just healing people. Maybe I don't know the person. Maybe his dad or whoever he was living with at the time was really good at medicine, so maybe he just picked up some things or something like that. Um, but then I envision at some point during Marbash's, um, but then after that, I imagine maybe like a year or so ago, maybe fairly recently within the past year, let's say, um, a group of raiders got wind of this settlement and figured out kind of its location because it was pretty secluded, pretty off the map, so they weren't messed with all too much. And maybe some big group of raiders found out about this place, heard about this place, and they're like, we want a piece of that place. And came and basically raided the whole thing um, to the point that they like probably you know, took over the place, burned stuff down, whatever. So pretty much everybody was either killed or kicked out. And Marbash was being this one of the lucky ones that wasn't killed, but instead forced to leave. Maybe he escaped, whatever. Like I said, details I'm not too worried about, just kind of broad strokes of what has happened. Um, so with the last year, raiders came, attacked his settlement, and so he's just been a wanderer since then. Um, maybe, you know, whoever he was living with or whatever, he doesn't really have anybody from that settlement um, that he knows of that he's wandering with. Obviously, he's by himself. Uh, so he just decided to wander towards the Boston area, the Commonwealth, and um, see what's going on in, like, Diamond City and whatnot. So I imagine that... Marbash is fairly new to this area in general. Like specifically, the current day is like spring, I think three is what I said for the day. Let me double check that that's right. Yeah, spring three. And so like I kind of mentioned this in my last stream, how I'm doing time with like days and months is just um, each month is essentially each season and they all have 25 days with five days a week. Um, so spring three is like the third day of the year, if you're counting winter at the end, which I guess I am. So, um, yeah, within the last year, at some point, Raiders came, he's been wandering for a while, but I think specifically Marbash is pretty new to the Concord area and to like this whole, um, this whole kind of region in general. Like I would say maybe he's been here maybe a month, like winter time, he finally started to roll up to the city the city proper and kind of the area in general. So that's why he, like he knows Trudy kind of, he's maybe traded with her a few times, has knows of the Abernathy family, kind of talked with them once, but he's not super familiar with the places and the people here. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I think of Marbash's backstory. So with that being said, the one thing I kind of wanted to figure out is, okay, Marbash is obviously a wanderer. So he doesn't, he normally, wanders from place to place not really having a permanent place to settle down but my question is he's been here a while now you know about a month in the area not super long in the grand scheme of things but long enough to know that there's a lot of people and stuff around so i think my question is has marbash a set like um established some kind of base of operations and maybe not necessarily a home like a permanent residence but someplace you know he keeps his stuff he sleeps in uh sleeps at stuff like that because right now he doesn't have a lot like he doesn't have like you know let's just say like a sleeping bag on him he doesn't so i imagine that there's probably i mean he might just go from like settlement to settlement finding you know hotels or inns um to sleep at which might be the case but i'm gonna ask mythic because this is one thing i was curious about is does marbash have some permanent place of residence whether it's just maybe like a permanent hotel at some settlement in Diamond City, or is it just some shack? You know, he's renovated and outside of some city. I don't know, but that's one thing I'm really curious about and would like to find out kind of before we get going, just so I can uh, figure out kind of what Marbash's situation is. So I'm going to ask, does Marbash have some uh, base of operations, I guess is how I'll put it, or just like some, yeah, we'll, we'll say that. I'm gonna go with very likely, because like I said, even though he's a wanderer, he's been here kind of a bit, and um, there's lots of abandoned places. So maybe he's just living in some abandoned house, hasn't even fixed, fixed it up yet, but I imagine there's somewhere he probably has stuff kind of kept, maybe, you know, a central location that he's always around that he maybe has found a place he likes, but 
does Marbash have any place he calls home? And the answer is yes. Okay. So then let's narrow down real quick. Is this... Okay, so let me ask this question then. Um, is this located in a settlement? That's my question. Is it located in a settlement? Which I think if he has a thing, you know, someplace, it's very likely it is in a settlement. Maybe it's outside. Maybe it's in the middle of nowhere. It's not in a settlement. Okay. So it's maybe, I kind of like the idea, I'm getting more of an image of some like abandoned house or even, I don't even, it doesn't need to be a house, just like some garage or like shed, something that he, like I said, could just put his stuff, maybe has, you know, a mattress, nothing too fancy, just enough to get a night's sleep and to keep some stuff. Okay, so I don't know where would be a great place to put this. Um, so I just picked kind of like a more central area so this little square here is where I'm thinking uh, Marbash is. I kind of like the idea that it's not maybe not like a shed, but some like outdoor garage, not huge, not like a barn, but like a garage, you know, like an like a just a detached garage. So nothing huge, bigger than a shed, smaller than a barn type thing. Maybe it was, you know, by a dock for boat supplies or out in the woods for some other stuff. Maybe it's near like an old farm for farm supplies, but it wasn't a barn. I don't know, but we'll say that Marbash's place, base of operations, I guess is as calling it, um, is over here, kind of, uh, what is that, East Concord, um, a little bit north of Lexington, kind of by this like water area over here. Maybe, like I said, it's on like, by the, kind of by the water, so I was thinking it's like maybe it's like boating supplies or just some random outdoor garage for whatever. And maybe it was a decent enough condition that Marbash found it. He's like, well, I need to stay here. Maybe he just had to stay there a night one time and then realized it's a pretty decent place to stay that looked pretty semi-fortified. So um, just started fixing it up and uh, made it his little place that he comes back to from time to time. Okay, I'm sorry I'm taking a little bit of time with this, but I also just wanted to figure out, you know, what Marbash has been up to. Because if he's a 38 year old dude, he's been around the wasteland for a while. So I kind of figure out what he's been, and especially like how new he is to this area and if he has any kind of base of operations. So the last thing I want to figure out real quick is there's all the different types of workbenches. And I'm just going to quickly go through one by one since this is a garage um, and kind of just roll to see if any of these workbenches are already in this garage. Like if I have any ways to craft stuff, because that's the main reason I want a base of operations. Is so I can slowly get start getting the workbenches and so I have a place to put stuff to craft and have a thing, way to craft stuff and I think the crafting mechanic is cool. I want to do more with it, but I need a reliable place to have workbenches, which I can maybe come up with some settlement that has them. I'd rather have just some place of my own and start doing it that way. So um, real quick, I'm going to go through each workbench. Armor workbench. I'm not going to go any higher than unsure. Um, so we'll say armor workbench. That's for, for armor. Um, we'll go with... We'll just go with... Um, We'll go with the un unsure. Sure, that's like the 50-50. Um, so no armor workbench, okay. Is there a chemistry workbench? I think that is unlikely. There is a chemistry workbench. I think cooking stations are really common, so I'm not even gonna ask. I'm just gonna say, because I think it's just like, you. I think a, a, just a fire, like an open flame is a cooking station. So I think that's really a safe thing to say that I have. A power armor station. I don't even know if I want to, I'm not even going to ask. I'm going to just assume. No, I don't. Um, a robot workstation, I'm going to think is very unlikely, but possible. Um, no, and there's a random event. I'm not even trying to. <laughs> it was cool, as you could see here, whenever a random event happens, it rolls all the stuff for you. So it rolled in uh, a closed thread, and then it rolled stuff for that. So travel rumor. Whatever that means. I'm not going to do that event because I'm just kind of doing backstory stuff. Like, I am playing, but I'm not playing right now, you know? Um, so I'm not... I'm just doing backstory stuff, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but what did... That came up, no. And that was for me having a robot workstation. Okay, so the last one is a weapons workstation, which I'll say is probably unlikely. But let's see. Um, yes. Okay. So I do have a couple of things. Um, 
workbench. So I do have a chemistry thing, an open fire to cook some flames, and then a weapons workbench. So maybe this, some, you know, person's garage that had, you know, a weapon station before, and also like just had a table full of like chemicals, or, like cleaning or something. I don't know. I'm just coming up with stuff, but okay. That's been established that Marbesh now has a bit of a base of operation over there. Um, cool. That is all I really wanted to do backstory wise. I just want to make sure I got that all figured out before we start moving forward. All right. So then I guess the last thing to do is in the journal, create a new scene. So let me copy this stuff from the previous scene and let's go ahead and create a new scene. So scene five, um, finish journey to Museum of Freedom. I can spell right. There we go. And I'll just paste this in. So last I was doing that battle, that probably took at least, I don't know, a half hour. Who knows? And nothing too crazy. Um, I'm just going to write between Abernathy Farms and Concord. And that's where we started last. So at the end of scene four, the chaos ranking was four. And then I said, um, cause we were pretty in control of that scene. Like, yeah, there was a disagreement between raiders and, and some settlers or traders, but um, we seemed to deal with it pretty well. Got things taken care of. There wasn't any you know, big injuries. I think I did lose a few hit points. Um, I got maybe got hit once or twice, but that's okay. Still got a lot of health, and I'm a medic, so like I can just kind of heal myself or rest it off. I'm not too concerned about that. But um, we need to finish up this journey to the Museum of Freedom, which I said before. I'm kind of right now treating each square as like a mile. Um, so I'm not sure. It's about a mile away. So that's like 0.86. Yeah, it's about like I'm like if I went like a straight shot, it would more or less be a mile. So let me see. Okay, so we have an idea of what the scene's supposed to be. I have about a mile or so to go to the Museum of Freedom. Uh, let's roll for a scene alteration. So let's see if the scene happens as we think, if it's interrupted or anything like that. So the scene is going to be altered. Um. Okay. So I've been thinking. I don't. I'm trying to think of the best way to alter the scene. I feel like there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, so my whole thing is I'm going to this museum to, to group with the Minutemen to see what they're up to. Um, let's go ahead and ask Mythic because I'm curious. So I think the way it's altered is just I get there fine, but then they're not there, um, which I don't know where they're going to be. I'm gonna say that's very likely um, as an expectation because I mean, I could just go with it, but let's ask Mythic like, is it is the change that they, the Minutemen aren't there? Okay, so the change is the Minutemen aren't there. So, okay. So that, that I have another question then, but let's let's hold off a second. And um, I continue my journey. Da, 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 da. Whoops, I need to actually go to the select mode grab my character and move to the Museum of Freedom. So I get there, clearly I'm looking for the Minutemen and they aren't there. Then the question I'm wondering right off the bat then is when I get there, are they not there because there's someone else there? Like, is it a group of raiders that has taken over, you know, the Museum of Freedom? That I think is an interesting question. So I mean, I guess the question is, is there someone else there besides the Minutemen? Like at the Museum of Freedom. Um, if they're not there, I'm gonna go with unsure because I don't know. Maybe someone ran them out. Maybe they left to do to gather supplies. Maybe they're just out on a new mission. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna say I'm un I'm I'm unsure. I don't know. Are there? Is there another group here at the museum? Is there someone else in the museum? barely but no so the museum is empty okay that's kind of interesting then because if it was just you know a group of raiders then that kind of makes sense why the minutemen would dip um 
if they obviously like couldn't hold them off themselves. So then why are the Minutemen not here? Where did they go? It's a good question. Um, I'm gonna look around. Um, okay, I'll show you the best way to do this. So I'm gonna do a survival check. And um the thing I'm curious about is I just want to see if I can maybe I don't know if this is the best way to do this check, but I wanted to see if I could find like any footprints or like signs of a fight or anything left behind. I'm basically trying to do like a perception slash like investigation check, but there's really no great skill for that in this, which is kind of weird. Um so I guess this kind of makes the most sense, I think, is doing some sort of like survival check to kind of just look for like wait, I said footprints signs of like you know blood on the ground see if there was a fight here or like a note that'd be great i don't think they probably left a note but who knows um so let's see if i'm able to find anything so this rolls two twos which is uh two successes so i think with um with two successes i'm able to find some information do I find any like signs of altercation? You know, blood, ammo, bullet, like ammo shells on the ground, stuff like that. I'm going to go with unlikely. I don't think there was any big fight here. I don't think that's what drove them out. It, it, it's making me believe more that they just kind of left on their on their own accord. Um, but let's see. Was there signs of a fight? I'm going to go with unlikely. No. OK, so I'm looking around doing some beacon and poking. Doesn't. Doesn't look like I see any you know, bullets or blood or anything like that. So seems like these Minutemen, you know, I'm like yelling through the halls of this museum. Um, no one's here. Um, at least that I can hear and or see. So they're not there. Is there any like, let me see if I can, is there a computer terminal around that maybe, I don't know if they were logging their activity, but maybe they were, who knows? Like, I don't know if like if they're doing some sort of a uh, log of like the, the, what they're up to um so is there a computer around in the museum somewhere like at like a desk or something i'm going to probably go very likely that there, there probably is um okay i'm able to find a terminal somewhere great is there a code on it um i'm unsure let's just do a 50 50 road is there a, is there a code on the terminal there is well then Looks like we have to do a bit of hacking. Um, let's see if we can hack into this terminal real fast. Fast hack. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to do my science. I don't know what a good difficulty for this would be. So I'm going to go with two. Try to hack into this. Um, and I think I might buy an extra D20 to roll. And just give an action point to mythic essentially giving it to the gm um so if i need two successes because this is also my tag skill so i could probably generate some extra successes um i don't have a whole lot of luck points so let's just see what happens i need two successes um i got three so that means that generates a luck point okay cool i'm able to hack into the terminal and then I get some information. So I'm in this terminal. Do I see any logs from the Minutemen about what they were up to, where they went? I'm gonna go unlikely. I don't think that's something they would do, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Um, so let's see. Nope, no logs from them. Um, do I find any, any useful information? Um, like any useful like logs or anything um, just about like reports or anything that could help me. I don't even know what I'm looking for. Like, what can I do with this terminal? Is there any like cool like doors I can unlock or like things I can activate? Um, I think it's likely that there's something I can do with the terminal. Yes, there is. Um, okay. Are there, this is a museum, so there's not gonna be like turrets, I don't think. So maybe you could just unlock some doors somewhere. Uh, maybe to some previously locked room that has some loot. Maybe I could do some scavenging. Perhaps. But you know what? We'll save that for next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. I'll be back next week continuing this adventure, seeing what kind of cool stuff this terminal will get us. So 
subscribe if you want to catch that. And if you want to see one of my recent videos, click in the top right corner of the screen.